an ever-changing world, Off Hollywood Media presents a voice of truth and inspiration, resonating a vibration of love and understanding, illuminating new paths for new directions, as we, as one, strive for higher and higher levels of consciousness, always remembering life changes. And now, your host, our MC, our master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Ciao, everyone. Wow, this is an exciting time, and life is changing at Life Changes as we talk. Well, we say that often, but you know what? It's true, and I I have a feeling we're all going to be saying it more and more, and it's going to become a catchphrase because, hey, life changes, and of course, but when we are conscious of it, and when we stay within the moment and recognize that this is part of the process, no uh, surprise. And no, not all of a sudden life changed. No, it, it, it's, that is the constant. So if we accept it and we expect it and we uh, have tools ready to either combat it or, or, or deal with it or even affect it, positively especially, then we could all be in a better place. And it's interesting because I needed to be in a better place uh, in many ways. And, and you know how they say, don't believe what is printed about you in the media. And uh, even, even good things that are written about me, I, I usually, I read it, 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 I have to admit some of it feels good. Uh, but I, I try not to pay too much attention because I, I do know that it's a double-edged sword because I've also read things that it's like, well, I never said that, or at least I didn't say it that way. And they, they haven't been disparaging things, but they, they, they just have been things that, that I haven't said. And, and so I, you just got to be vigilant, in my opinion, with your consciousness. And in this particular case, Amici Magazine wrote an article about me and about the show Life Changes. And it's in a, it's, it's a, what, what is it exactly? It, it's a celebrity magazine in the Italian community. Actually, that's uh, their actual tagline. And so they talk about people out there in the Italian community that are, that are doing stuff doing things and, and all that. And I, I just didn't know how they would embrace this. What is it? The National Italian American Celebrity Lifestyle. Um, Andrew Gazzaldo is the, is the editor. And he chose to wrote, write this article my, uh, himself, which I thought was really interesting. And uh, so he called and we had an interview and I gave him a lot of information. And then I, I didn't hear back from him, so I don't even know. If, I didn't even know if they wrote the article. And then somebody on Facebook said, "Hey, I just read an article about you in Amici magazine." So I contacted the magazine. I said, "I'd love to see the article." And the next thing I know, I get it in the mail. Well, life changes indeed. I didn't expect to read and get what I got after reading this article. I had no idea that I had said these things to him uh, in this way, or he put them in this way based on what he heard me say. And I often say, sometimes we say things but don't know that we're saying them, but we have all the answers. And as I'm reading this, the article literally brought me to tears. It was very flattering, but it wasn't that it was flattering. It was that he got something that I wasn't saying, at least I didn't think I was saying, helped me learn something about me and about our show. And that was a big deal for me. And literally, it, it, it had me in tears. And I, I, I didn't know how to thank him. And he had written a, an article about me before when I was doing a different radio show. And that was just a really pleasant article. But this one um, changed my life. And I wrote him and I said, thank you. And he wrote back saying, first of all, let me thank you for the compliment that you gave me about the article. However, you as a subject, with all you do and accomplished 
makes writing an easy factor. So what he said was that I wasn't getting who I am. And that made me stop and think that somebody else has to tell me who I am. Well, frankly, a lot of people have. I have the benefit of having beautiful people in my life tell me who I am. And the interesting thing is, is that hopefully I will have read it, heard it, and uh, gotten it for the last time. Um, and I'm very grateful for, for that life-changing moment um, that I got from reading this article. And in the article, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, have it posted on, on Facebook, and we'll put it up on our website uh, so that, that you all could read it if you're interested. But the one thing that I thought was really interesting is that he focused on, being that it was an Italian magazine, uh, he focused on the aspect of my father and mother being Italian and what they taught me from their heritage and what I took away from it here in America. And, and it was really interesting how he tied a song in that I've sung in many of my shows and I've shared this with him. And uh, I've never met the man, actually. And I don't even know if he've ever, he's ever come to a show, but he's interviewed me twice. And, and, and this is what he got out of it. It's really interesting. So my, my father, the story that he focused on and used it as an example and showed me what it was that I wasn't seeing in all this time. My father didn't want me to be a singer. And I've shared this in, in live shows, uh, whether it's life-changing events or uh, regular concerts that I've done. And uh, he did all he could to, to dissuade me from singing. However, ironically, he shared with me so many aspects about singing that did nothing but help me be a better singer. And it's, it's ironic, but since I was so focused on my dad doesn't want me to be me, and my dad doesn't like who I am and what I do, that that's where I stayed. And through help from many healers and friends and all kinds of books and whatever, I have come to the other side of that, which is I have to be who I am. But ironically, my dad, I, I've just recently come to the understanding that my dad's message was that all along. And so in the example of this song that Andrew Guzaldo mentions in the magazine Amici, he says that I sing the song Santa Lucia, which is one of my first song, one of the first songs my father taught me. And I used it in school for a competition and won the competition with that song. And my father didn't just teach me the song. He said, do you see that sky? It was at night. We were holding hands, walking in the, in the evening. He says, do you see that sky and those stars and that moon? That's the same moon that your grandmother is going to be seeing tomorrow night. And do you see this ocean? Because we live near the ocean. That's the same ocean that keeps going around the world and reaches your grandmother in Italy near she, where she lives. And he said, it's the same sun, the same stars, the same moon, the same ocean. But somehow in Italy, us old timers, we attribute such importance to these things that God is giving us, these miracles of every day. And he says, I don't think you have the voice to be a singer. But let me tell you something. If you ever sing any song, I want you to convey the song to the people. Since you don't have the voice, in his opinion, to show off and hold high notes and hit high notes and impress people with bravado, then give them a feeling of what the song is trying to say. And he said, for example, when you sing this song, the one he was teaching me, Santa Lucia, I want you to feel like you're on a boat in the middle of the Bay of Naples and you're looking out across the bay as the moon is reflecting on the waves of the ocean and you are gently rocking back and forth 
and you see your bay with the little lights and you know that your mother is there and your father is there, your family is there, your, all your loved ones are there, all your friends are there, and you alone in this boat think to yourself, I am so blessed, I am so lucky to be who I am and to be where I am. And I love everything about my life. And from that place, when you sing that song, people will feel that way about them. And so he started teaching me. Sul mare lucica l'astro d'argento Placida e l'onda, prospero il vento, sul mare luccica l'astro d'argento, placida e l'onda, prospero il vento. Venita l'agile barchetta mia, Santa Lucia, Santa Lucia. Venita l'agile barchetta mia, Santa Lucia, Santa Lucia. And I learned this song, and I've told this story every time that I've sung it. And it's interesting to see the reaction of the people because they're feeling what I'm feeling, and sometimes I want to cry, and sometimes I want to smile. And they're feeling. And my father taught me, it's funny, I want to cry right now. My father taught me to feel. Feel the music, feel the words, don't try to impress, just be yourself. And he taught me the greatest lesson of all, when being in front of an audience. And so now... I owe my father a great deal because he helped me with my singing career, but I did not make the connection that, that Andrew Gazzaldo did in his article where he says, no wonder the tagline of the show is, you've never felt radio like this before. So I thank Andrew, I thank my father, and I thank all of you. I actually didn't know I was going to break out into song. That kind of caught me off guard, actually. I wasn't planning on doing that at all, and my heart is beating uh, very rapidly because something inside of me just changed even more. And so thank you for being a part of that. Our guest tonight has had many life-changing moments and many people with her along the path, but she has come to a place in her life where she has recognized that she is here to do a job on this planet. And it's interesting because at the age of 20, when she was uh, uh, found out that she had cancer, at the age of 20, when uh, after she was quote-unquote cured or at least temporarily healed because she ended up having cancer five more times, she thought she was going to be dying soon. So she did everything. And I mean, uh, what she did, she became a, she, she was in, uh, she went to engineering school. She, uh, worked uh, at Capitol Records. She was an actress. She worked with Michael Jackson and the B-52s in the rock and roll business. Uh, she worked, uh, as a director and a producer, uh, at, at NBC and she was an executive there. I mean, the list goes on and on of what she has done. But what she feels at this point are the most important things for her is for her to be a change agent and a paradigm shifter. 
And the reason she is on, that is the reason she is on our show today, because she's helping people change lives. And, and one of the most important parts of all of this that she's come to is that her job is to be a voice for the people regarding health. And it's interesting that she's had health issues, and we'll talk about that, but her movie that's coming out soon is called um, Pandora's Mouth, A Heavy Metal Misadventure, and it's about Mercury. And she's teaching us how Mercury is in our lives, how it is affecting our lives, and what we need to do about it. So I welcome to the show Miss Kelly Gallagher. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Filippo. It's an honor to be on your show, and I was so, ah, I was on the line while you were, while you were speaking and singing, and, and that was life-changing. Thank you so much for sharing from deep within your soul. Wow. But Thank yes, you. I'm I'm actually, here. Huh? <laughs> I'm actually still shaking a little bit about it, because I, I did not <laughs> expect that to come out. And, you know, uh, that's what it's all about, being in the moment, I guess. And oh, I forgot why I was on the show. I was, like, I was so mesmerized and so, you know, taken in by all of that and really gave me an opportunity to, you know, shift and, you know, get grateful again for life. And, you know, because even though I've been through so much and I'm here to change and inspire and, and and, you know, help facilitate the paradigm shift. It's, you know, some days you can get caught up in the mundane, you know, dealings of life. I have them a little under the weather. have that, that little flu bug got me. I had to go for a checkup over at the hospital and came back with the flu. Uh-huh. <laughs> the good news is I don't have cancer and my heart's fine. So, um, okay. <laughs> you know. No more but of that. And actually, no more it's of good. that. But, uh, it's interesting that the, our first time on radio, you're you're a little under the weather because the very first time we met, and you were a complete stranger to me. I didn't even, exp- you know, I didn't even know I was going to be meeting you. But somebody asked me to help you out of a car and up a stairwell, <laughs> and I I didn't know you. And the next thing I know, I'm carrying an oxygen tank and carrying you practically up a stairs because you had had. A million quadruple, triple bypass heart surgery. What was that? A heart well, valve. I, you, I, was a, I was about to have a heart attack when you were walking my oxygen tank up the stairs because, you know, Filippo does not have a face for radio. He's gorgeous, and I was like <laughs> carrying this oxygen tank and went, oh no! But, but, but you know, I didn't know whether to faint or to like run, but I couldn't run, so he carried my oxygen up and. Yes, I had just spent 51 days in Cedar sinai having a heart valve replacement and then like three weeks in a hotel close to Cedars because I couldn't breathe and had come through the worst war I had ever gone through in my health journey, which started when I was 20. And, you know, that was 26 years ago. So I, um, but I was determined to go up those steps. I, I knew that, I, you know, somebody had said to me, you know, do you want to go see Dorothy and Filippo? And, uh, you know, I was at Agape sitting in a wheelchair, and I, I don't know what maybe I just went, yes, I had such a reach, and I didn't know you guys. But it was a changing experience for me because I was very, very sick, and I got a lot of healing, a lot of love that day. Mm. Mm. Well, I, you know what? I'm going to give all that credit to Dorothy because um, I know that you and her did a lot of work together, and, and um and and it it is it is a miracle because I saw you actually at one of our live events a couple months ago and you came up to me and here's this beautiful woman saying hi Filippo and gives me this big hug and I'm like I'll take it hi back and and I it it took a moment and and you recognized the fact that I had no idea who you were because you uh, had changed or had blossomed back into your beautiful self from the shell of a woman that you were and I, I could not believe what I was seeing. And so uh, to hear you then speak at some other events saying, you know, that you were grateful to Dorothy for the help. And, and you know, that's, that's really, that's just really a reflection of um, what this is all about, isn't it? No, I recommend anybody who can see Dorothy, see Dorothy. It's, it's a, you know, it's like an accelerator to have, to, to just get the, to the gift of the communication and the, 
a deep intergalactic cosmic experience that that she you know guides you through it was i think it it really shifted my whole healing process it, it they weren't expecting me to be able to breathe for you know several more months it, it's you know that's the problem that you know that's can we talk a little my problem with healthcare is, is the definition of healthcare because it's it's things like um the healing light that enter, that 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 Dorothy provides and many other healers that aren't included in our our health care plans is is I think what's kind of wrong with health care and this mm. is, you know we're, we're connected our bodies our mouths our eyes are all part of a system and the the health care system is broken because they've separated systems you know did, did anybody ever think about that? You know, we don't have dental insurance. We don't have eyeball insurance. But they're the things that are closest to your brain. Mm. And so mm. by separating these, these systems, there's no integration. And many, many problems that we have in health today stem from the mouth. And, and I mean, it, that goes back to, you know, ancient Chinese wisdom and, you know, like every two. Uh, corresponds to a meridian in the body like acupuncture and it's remarkable um, the complexity of it but it it's, it works it's true and the biological dentists have these charts on their walls and you can go up to your tooth and go that tooth hurts and then all of a sudden you realize it was connected to the toe that hurt it that hurt yeah yeah interesting absolutely you know um uh, this is coming from a woman who who knows her stuff because you have learned from the school of hard knocks 26 years in and out of the hospital so much so that you have actually outlived your insurance um it, it, which is amazing which is millions of dollars so uh hard to believe that uh you know here we are uh you know getting this wisdom from somebody who has lived it and and can tell us that there's something else we need to be looking at. Well, I think in in healthcare we really need to look at the the roots of the problem, and and I'm I, I'm about looking for the cause, and then I think you'll find the cure, because mm-hmm. I, I think what's wrong with with many people and and what we're finding is, you know, the the rise of chronic illness is. In my opinion, and from the science that I've seen traveling the world shooting this film about mercury, is linked directly to heavy metal toxicity, which creates a terrain for viruses and molds. And, you know, then you, you've got chemicals and pesticides that, that, that everything likes to set up shop in this heavy metal environment in our body. So all mm-hmm. of the critters that we don't want, you know, are are held there by this toxicity and I think it's it's what keeps people from having their being clear enough to have their 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 full maybe cosmic connections too it's like it it really mercury can really cloud your your connection okay so you feel that one one of the biggest problems is is heavy metal toxicity and one of the biggest uh, culprits of that is is mercury, and so this that's why this this movie that you've spent uh, uh, quite a while researching uh, mercury. Now, those of us who don't really think about mercury or know much about mercury, where would we encounter mercury? Well, the first route of human exposure, according to the World Health Organization, is your dental fillings. If you have a silver filling. Um, it's not silver. It's 48 to 54 percent mercury, and uh, they leak mercury vapor at the rate of 43 micrograms per day, according to the scientists that we've worked with. And mercury is more toxic than lead. So if you've got mercury vapor coming off your teeth and you're eating fish, which is now, you know, it's sad to say, and I and I really hate to be the messenger, but there is. Most of the fish is contaminated, and and much more than they're saying. We sat at the FDA fish advisory hearings when we were out on the road shooting the documentary. We were on what we called the Open Your Mouth Tour. Um, Okay. That's the middle of the film. And we we, we went to these hearings, and we listened to them debate, not not if there was mercury in the fish, but but should they tell the people? And if so, how? 
So it was it was really alarming, and and you know for those that like to eat tuna fish out of can, which you know I lived on tuna fish out of can for a while. It was easy, it, you know, it was great Weight Watcher meal, and um, it's toxic. You know, uh, they had levels of mercury coming out of these cans of tuna. We had these mercury vapor sniffers that would measure the toxicity, and you know they would go off in really high levels when you wave one over a can of tuna, which is scary. You know, how many people eat tuna? It's cheap. And so you're not uh, saying it's coming out of the can, but you're you're actually saying it's in the fish. So it's in the it's in your dental fillings. It's in the fish. It, it used to be in thermometers. It was in blood pressure pumps. You know, if you broke a thermometer, you basically had a super fun sight. It's in the fluorescent light bulbs. Um, it's in these curly, these new save your, your carbon footprint uh, light bulbs, which, you know, I'm glad that they are reducing the the, the carbon. But it's if you break one, they are, you know, like a super fun sight. So you have to be really careful, and that's what they don't have on the box. What do you do with it when it's, 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 you know, in five years when you're supposed to change the light bulb? So, you know, there's this, we have to read labels. We have to pay a lot of attention to to details. Um, the FDA just classified dental mercury as of July 28th of this year, which was a fight that all of the non-governmental organizations, the Mercury Policy Project, Consumers for Dental Choice, Oceana, um, you know, Greenpeace, all of these, uh, NRDC, all of these great n- nonprofits, you know, did all this work, and um, then they took away the warnings for pregnant women and children. So it's like, you know, you, you think you're making headway in Washington, and I watch all of these people that I, you know, shot in my film do all of this hard work, and they just play hide the ball. So we have to, you know, it's, we all have to be our own citizens of the planet. Wait, Kelly, are, are you, that's for sure, uh, and, and thank you for, for being that uh, for yourself and for some of us who, who aren't aware of certain things. What, what are you saying is that uh, mercury, of course, is toxic from what you're saying and what I understand as well, but that the warning has been removed for, for pregnant women? Like where? Where would that be? Or where was it before the warning? Well, there was a warning up on the FDA's website that that pregnant women and and children under six, um, you know, unborn fetuses, were to you know beware of mercury, and they took it down. They they just removed the warning. They buried it on you know it's it's on like the I think the the page on workers. It has nothing. You know, it, it's it's nowhere where a consumer would look anymore. And it, it's, a, it's been a huge debate and a big lawsuit going on with Consumers for Dental Choice against the FDA. Um, and now, I mean, I just met with Congresswoman Watson last week about the chairman of, the commissioner of the FDA, uh, Margaret um, Homburg, who was appointed and then come to find out was on the board of the largest distributor of dental products, which is called Henry Shine. So now this woman is, you know, on the board and making, I think they said a half, either owned a half million dollars in stock or something like that. And now one step farther, come to find out her husband is a a hedge fund uh, guy and working on this this issue also. So there's just a lot of of details going on in Washington, and, and I think we all have to have to really uh, look out for our our health freedoms right now. You know, a lot of things are changing. And I, okay, and, I, and I want... Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, you want to finish your thought? Well, I, I don't... I think that we, you know, I, I want to be positive and have positive life changes. And at the same time, I think we have to be aware and, and open our eyes and you know, know that the H1N1 vaccine has 25 micrograms of mercury in it and, you know, really do your research. You know, get online and, and look at, at there. you can find it, what's in these vaccines, what's in, you know, how long have they been around, are they approved. I mean, I think you'll find that a lot of this has um, been rushed. It, yeah, you know... Um 
this is a, a night of firsts and a, a night of changes, but you know, we, we do wonder, get some wonderful comments on our shows uh, and in emails and, and phone calls from fans and friends and family afterwards and, and on Facebook. And, and now, because of you and the show, we're, we're getting a text message, actually two that have come in. And uh, one of them says, wow, I needed to hear this. She's great. I have been sick with vertigo and stumped at what I can be, at what it can be. I'm seeing a new doctor tomorrow. What tests should I ask for and what kind of treatments? I, I think this is wonderful. See what you're doing. See what we're doing. And let, let's answer that question in, in just a moment because I want to make sure um, that we are uh, focused on where we get this. So we get it from tuna and, and other fish or some other fish well, or... The- I think um, the U.S. Geological Survey has just came out and said that most of the fishes in the rivers and the streams are contaminated. So, you know, they're really almost, almost almost everything is contaminated with some levels of mercury, and I think it's just wise to limit your consumption. There is a website called gotmercury.org that is totally not affiliated with me, but I think they rock. They have a... They have sort of a, a mercury meter. You can put in your favorite fish and what, what, how much you weigh and how many, what you, how many times you eat it, and it will tell you where you are on the scale of mercury toxicity with fish. Wow, um, where, so where does this, where does this come from? Where do the fish get it? it? Obviously from the water. From, well, coal-fired plants. You know, there's there's hundreds of new coal-fired plants being created in China. I mean, they're building them as fast as they can. Um, I was at the United Nations in Geneva in 2002 at the at the United Nations Environmental Program and their global assessment of mercury. And it was really about the global transport of mercury and not transport like you think, you know, on a boat, but transport in the atmosphere. Um, mm. Of course, they did cover, you know, boating and shipping and, and the moving of hazardous waste. But it's going up in the air from coal-fired plants. It's It's from mining. It's from... You know, dumping things in the ocean. It's from, you know, weapons that have been detonated. It's it's from a lot of things. Um, wow. And okay, in, and so. in, in our in, a, in in our wastewater treatment plants, it's the number one contributor of mercury to our wastewater is dentists. And for you know a thousand bucks, they could have a mercury separator that would keep that mercury out of the wastewater treatment plants because they're not designed to um, be able to do anything about it. And I think it costs like a million dollars to get a pound of mercury out of the wastewater treatment plants. So why not trap it and keep it from getting there in the first place? Wow. Well, okay, so so now we know where it comes from. It's obviously in, in our air, it's in our water, and it's in our fish. Our food. <laughs> and, and it's in our uh, amalgams uh, for, for our teeth. Um, and it's so, in some vaccines. Ah, really? Okay. Yeah, That's it used to be, and it used to be in calamine lotion. It used to be in eye solution. It, it used to be in horse medicine. I mean, you know, God forbid an animal gets sick, and the FDA takes it, the, the whatever, you know, medicine has mercury in it right off the shelf. Um, I, it, we should treat our our, our people as well. Um, so it's it's been in lots of different medical supplies. They have been taking it out of thermometers. They've taken it out of um, what do they call it in the in the cars. They had them in like, there's little meters in the cars that they used to have it. They don't have that anymore. Um, okay. So how how does it affect us? What are what are some of the uh, either the symptoms or the diseases that have been uh, you know, measured back or, or found to to be caused by or affected by mercury. Well, it goes back as far as you know. The term "mad as a hatter." Yeah. Okay. Well, "mad as a hatter." The term terminology came from the hatters. Well, I don't know what it means, but were the hatters the people that would make hats? Actually, that they pressed the hats with mercury, and they would go mad. So they would, that that's how the terminology "mad as a hatter" came into being. Oh. Um, uh, Minamata, they had a big spill in Japan and, and people came down with what they called Minamata's disease. And they had severe tremors and, and 
and deformities, and it was you know, very tragic. Mercury poisoning can manifest in many ways, from brain fog to ADD to fibromyalgia to chronic fatigue to MS to ALS to Alzheimer's. Um, the scientists that we've you know met and worked with around the globe have linked all of these you know illnesses and are, are finding that that mercury toxicity is what's present in all these people with all these really major illnesses. Mm. Um, you know, and it's it's been a a big game in the world of research, you know, to get, it, it doesn't benefit, I guess, I, I guess it doesn't benefit the powers that be to uh, to work on this mercury issue. I, I, I don't know, I think it's the sliver that makes everybody sick that the industry profits upon. That's what I think. Okay, so now we know where it comes from in, in at least how we get it in our body and and what it does for us what do we do to get it out or to prevent it from getting in obviously i mean people are going to eat tuna people are going to eat fish so you're saying that there might be safer fish or less fish to start off with or what do we do i think you need to limit your consumption and you need to take things like chlorella or um Parsley or cilantro are chelators, so they're things that help to pull mercury out of the body. Okay. Um, it's you know if you're going to eat it, then you should you know make sure that you're helping your system to keep it going out faster than it's going in. Um, okay. And and gonna, and then for our water, I'm assuming a filter that also cleans out uh, mercury out of the water. I don't know. Uh, I don't know about cleaning mercury out of the water. By the time you get the water, I don't think there's any. I don't. I, I don't know about mercury in our water. Okay. I'm saying it gets into the wastewater treatment plants, which is our sewer water. Right, right, right. And our dirty water, and I. That it's it's a problem when it gets there. Whether that gets recycled back out to us drinking it, you know, I actually don't have that statistic. Yeah, um, I think uh, actually. Uh, I've heard some statistics. <laughs> I'm so wrapped up in this that I, I'm trying to listen to you, and and I don't even want to ask the question because you're so fascinating. Um, I'm uh, statistics that uh, that water is going from toilet to uh, faucet uh, in 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 very short time. Um, very very little cleaning is being done. They're not enough, obviously. Um, especially if we're talking about mercury um, and, and what other stuff, who knows. But in any event, uh, so, yeah, filtration well, is... Yeah, water, uh, water is just a huge problem. It's our, yeah. you know, that's the next oil and already really is. So. Right, right. And, and that's probably your next movie. But um, in the meantime, <laughs> we're still on mercury now. Um, and so then, then the teeth, uh, uh, the amalgam in our teeth, that, that, that stuff has to come out and... And not just, it's unfortunate, but not just any dentist can do it because as they're doing it, getting it out, it's affecting you because you're breathing it in, right? Right. And you have to make sure that you go to a dentist, for number one, that really believes that this is a problem and that they know that mercury is toxic. Because if they just say, oh, it doesn't matter, then they're not going to protect you, they're not going to protect themselves, and they're not protecting anybody in their office. And you want to run. Um, you want to go to a dentist that's wearing a gas mask and puts oxygen on your nose and does low-speed uh, drilling and high-speed suction and has a mercury ionization machine in the room. And, and I think that, you know, because it's hazardous. Here's the deal. Mercury is, is handled like hazardous waste before it goes in your mouth or hazardous product, and it's handled like hazardous waste when it comes out. So mm. how they've conned us into believing that it's inert when it's in our mouth is, you know, a really great sales job, but it's just not true. It's just not true. It's hazardous okay, before, so it's hazardous after. So you have to go to a dentist, and I repeat this, you have to go to a dentist that gets that, or you're going to get sick, and you might as well just leave it alone because you're better off not. Don't have it removed unless you're going to do it right. That's my advice. I had mine removed improperly, and I was re-diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma after having been in remission for nine years. Wow, wow. Jeez, yeah. Kelly. 
you've been through so much, um, and maybe hopefully a, the the you know that this is what we get for you having gone through all this is that you know we learn from from what you've been through, and I'm sorry that you've had to go through all this, but um, let let me ask you then once going back to our our listeners' question. Um, what what can one do to get tested to see if there's mercury in the system or, or what kind of a doctor knows what to do with that? Um, there is a company in Colorado which is called Silver Scientific and that company makes a mercury test. It's not really, I don't know if this test is available yet at your you know local doctor. It depends on what kind of doctor you're going to. But if you uh, if you call up Quicksilver Scientific or go online, and they'll send you a test, and you can tell mm. them that you heard that you, that you heard about it on the radio with uh, Life Changes with Filippo and Kelly G, and and I'll see if I can work out a discount. <laughs> Kelly G. Kelly G. <laughs> Kelly Gallagher. I- Kelly G. <laughs> huh? I, you're you're such a rock star. I call you Kelly Gallagher, but I guess Kelly G. It is from now on. Well, you know, whatever. I was married to a rock star drummer, but that was in a different <laughs> different life. He had cancer too, and and he he and I went through a a lot of the war together. Um, and a, a very Pink. famous one, actually. <laughs> come to think of it. Yes, yes. He's the drummer for Pink, and I just got yeah. to go to the Pink show in Los Angeles at the Staples Center. It was awesome. And he's awesome, and he's an inspiration to many. Um, he's out talking about, you know, motivating people to, you know, get up and make it happen, and out yapping about me and his story, and you know, making people cry, and then, but you know, inspiring people to to do something and, and get up and take charge of their life. So. Absolutely, and and uh, thank you for doing this. I, I know that you've been busy with uh, like the Mayo Clinic, doing something with the women's leadership for heart, this and that, and and you've got a foundation, you got a wanna. I, I you know I spelt that wrong actually. I thought I was being real cool and spelling it all cool and stuff, and I wasn't cool enough evidently. And it's the letter U, gotta G O T T A and wanna W A N N A um, dot com. Very clever. And and there you coach people on how to survive life and and all that good stuff. But but be, but before we we leave the Mercury thing, when is your movie coming out? Do you have a date yet? Or is it next year sometime? It's going to be next year sometime. We're really right now just fundraising so that we can go back into the edit bay and 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 finish it. We're done shooting and we have one heck of a story. So I, I hope to be out next year. Absolutely. Okay, well, we look forward to that. I'm sure it's going to help a lot of people. I know it can scare a lot of people, and that's not your intent, except to say, hey, you know, for, forewarned is forearmed, and, and we can do something about it. What are the couple of the things that we can do about it? What do we do, write the Congress people? I mean, what do we do? Um, I think by finding biological dentists and, and, and refusing to have treatment on your mouth that isn't done by people that are looking at your body as a whole unit. I'm, the, the doctors and dentists that I go to work together as teams. They communicate with one another. They know how the the the, the mouth impacts the body and vice versa. And I think that it's time for the system to change. I mean, that is I I want to shift this paradigm of healthcare. I am really. I know that my mouth has been a big reason for my illnesses, all of them. You know, and I recently had open heart surgery. It will be a year ago tomorrow, actually, that I had open uh-huh. heart surgery. And um, yeah, you're right. A couple of weeks ago, I got to do go to uh, the Mayo Clinic for Women Heart, which is an organization that is now very dear to my heart. And they are, you know, here to tell us about heart disease, and and you know that's the number one killer of women. And here, you know, we blame all of our problems on PMS and menopause. <laughs> And in reality, some of our symptoms and what's going on are early warning signs of of heart disease. And I I want to be out talking about that too because I think women need to, you know, pay attention and take care of themselves because we're always so busy taking care of other people. Well, we, uh, Kelly, 
I, I, I get the feeling that you and life changes have a lot to do together, and so Absolutely. we'll be talking about all kinds of things. But in the meantime, we've been talking about uh, Mercury and your movie, which uh, hopefully will come out next year, uh, in the beginning of the year. And, and uh, we want to remind everybody, at the moment at least, it's called Pandora's Mouth, A Heavy Metal Misadventure. Um, Kelly, your uh, your cool your other cool site is uh, Jammin Planet, and again that's spelled the cool way J A M M I N like Nancy, and then Planet P L A N E T uh, dot com, and um, you got a wanna is on there too for those who are interested in there, and you've got looks like some updates on the Mercury movie and. And a couple other things that you're doing. And um, one more time, what, what, what was that place that you go to uh, take the test? Do you have a website for that, or was it just the name? Oh, it's QuicksilverScientific.com. Okay. okay. QuicksilverScientific.com. QuicksilverScientific.com. And, uh, you know, if, if you contact them, let them know that you heard about them through us, and, and we'll, we'll work out a deal, and I'll make sure that that happens tomorrow if we go and, you know, for whatever they're charging, we'll, we'll make sure that they get the, the Pandora's Mouth and Pandora Changes, Life Changes discount. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, Kelly, I like you a lot. <laughs> I like you too, and I want to hang out. We have so many things to help change the world. Yeah, we're doing it, babe. We're um, doing it. No, I'm doing it one mouth at a time, and, and you're you're doing it one heart at a time. And, you know, I also just want to invite you to be part of, we're going to be doing a concert, a benefit. you got to want a foundation. The Avalon has donated their building. And my old buddy, Miss uh, Dale Bozio from Missing Persons, has mm. um, agreed to play for us. And uh, I think you need to be there and, and, and help uh, run the show and, and MC or something with me. You know, it'll be a pleasure. You just let me know, and uh, we'll make it happen, and I look forward to it. I do, Kelly too. Gallagher, or Kelly G, no matter what you call her, she's a, a rock star and uh, a, a great heart, and I'm glad they saved your heart. And now keep it um, in good condition, and no more of this, because we've got work to do, and we're so glad you're out there doing it. Thank you so much for sharing all this information with us. Thank you. Big hugs, big kisses. <laughs> right back at you. Ciao. Ciao. Well, well, a, another show of life changes. I, I, I guess I just can't say that enough. And and here, here are some more changes to come up for sure. You know, it's interesting that uh, Kelly referred to Dorothy as uh, the, I, I think she said the accelerator. And she couldn't be more right on. Uh, I, I, I've been through the, the Dorothy uh, School of Learning and, and, and Healing, and uh, she's an accelerator, she's an awakener, she's an activator, and I've been awakened, accelerated, and activated, and now we're all going to get to hear from her in the State of the Universe Address. So here is Dorothy Lee. Thank you, Kelly, for being on tonight, and thanks for the kind words. I love you and come fly with me. Tonight's message is for all of our listeners who feel compelled to be active during this time of planetary ascension and just don't know how to go about it. One of my jobs is as an ambassador of light, as a member of the Children of the Sun. If you're searching for a way to be a positive participant, assisting with the great shift taking place on our beautiful planet, then consider joining with those of us who are members of the Children of the Sun and fans of Life Changes. The Children of the Sun and I have similar guided intentions for unified consciousness and one heart communication. These intentions are to align to divine will and to the highest good of all, to be motivated and committed to the mission of co-creating a new earth paradigm of expanded consciousness, divine equality with all people, global global peace and unity, to focus on selfless divine service as our highest priority in collaborative activities, to move individually and as a group in absolute integrity, impeccability, self-mastery, and alignment to divine principle and universal law, to serve in heart-centered unity, consciousness, 
and embrace every person and situation in authentic love, understanding, harmony, and compassion. To consistently monitor the quality, accuracy, appropriateness, clarity, and perception of our highest divine guidance to ensure the highest alignment to the unified mission and divine will. To completely detach ourselves from the glamours and illusions of this material plane of duality by integrating our personality with that of the soul and the supreme being. To embodying a desire-free and selfless state of neutrality, compassion, loving wisdom, pure perception, and knowledge that we are one with all energy and forms. To take highest responsibility for our own individual advancement and to self-mastery through personal contemplation, spiritual practice, and resultant transmutation, transformation, and transfiguration. To have unwavering courage to face our own fears and mental illusions while honoring them, loving them, and then releasing them to their higher energy form. To see only divine perfection in each person, experience, and manifestation. To move forward in unwavering trust and faith that we are totally and completely supported in all aspects and levels of our life experience. To honor our higher mind as connected to the one heart of creation, our unified consciousness, field of infinite potential. If the above referenced guidelines interest you, then please join me and become a member of the Children of the Sun as well as fans of Life Changes. You can go to our website, www.lifechanges.ws, and click on the links, and you will find the Children of the Sun link. These guidelines are simply guided intentions, and although I'm not always 100% on target, I use these guided intentions to become the best me I can be. Until next week, please choose to love yourself enough to make very conscious and elegant choices and always remember that you are the power in your world and that you are love, you are lovable, and you are love. Wow. Well, I felt that. (laughs) Uh, I can try and live by that, and uh, I certainly do try. And... Maybe I shouldn't even use the word try. I should say I do, but I don't yet. But I we do the best we can, indeed. So then, then I'm doing the best I can. And and today's show, oh my goodness, um, from my unexpected breakout in this song on radio (laughs) to our wonderful guest to Dorothy's wonderful message. Uh, to knowing that we're here together, at least at the moment, every week, sharing these life changes together means so much to me and affects me so much and affects so many of you, I know. I am so glad we are connected, we are together, that that we are doing this, we are being the change that we wish to see in ourselves, uh, in our lives, and in our world. And so with that, once again, I'd like to thank Kelly Gallagher for being on our show and invite you to learn more about her by going to our show archives on our website and clicking on the link for Kelly or for any of our past guests. And you can also hear Kelly's show in in the next couple days when we get that up and all the other shows that are already up. We look forward to being together again next week when we'll have another special guest. And remember that Just because we only get to meet each other or be together once a week this way doesn't mean we can't keep the conversation going during the week by being on uh, Facebook or going to our website or or calling us or texting us or (laughs) emailing us and, and, and staying connected because it's for all of us that we are doing this and we are all doing this together. Uh, This is one movement, one world, and um, one love. (laughs) Today's show has been made possible in part by our sponsors, Ionways Water Systems, Change Your Water, Change Your Life, and Love and Miracles, and Dorothy Lee, of course. To learn more about them, visit them on our sponsor page on our website and click on their links as well. I am Filippo Voltaggio, and it has been my pleasure... 
and continues to be a pleasure being of service by hosting Life Changes today. I, along with our segment host and producer, Dorothy Lee, and producer, Mark Lejeur, and our engineer, Seth, thank you for joining us and being part of this show and being part of the change we all wish to see in the world. Ciao, everyone. You have been listening to Life Changes. Join us here every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and visit us on the web at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. And follow our community on Facebook at Life Changes with Filippo. Join us here next week as we consciously embrace and explore the only constant, Life Changes. Life Changes.